Hello everybody. I'm trying to figure out how to turn my light so that I can get enough light on this book without having too much glare and in a way that I can also still see. Maybe that'll work. And that, when that becomes glary. Yeah, I think that might work right there. Um, I'm back from my trip and it's always nice to take a little bit of a break from things that you're working on. Uh, this page on this journal has always bothered me and I think I got too attached to some of the things on it and I uh, have just been reluctant to um, cover it. Really, I like this area right here, but the rest of it, yeah. I think that what's happening here is that I just don't have enough layers. I was really attached to this color combination and this red triangle. I think it's more about the color combination than the actual red triangle though, so I'm gonna let some of that go. But I like some of it, I like this part of it. I think that's interesting, this upper part, not so much. So it's nice sometimes to take a break. I like this page, but it got a little kind of dirty. I think I might need some fresh, crisp paint in a couple of areas here, but that one's close. So it's really nice to take a break from things when you're starting to feel stuck. And I did feel like I was struggling with this. Now, part of that I think is that I'm trying to film it and paint intuitively at the same time. So this was just barely getting started. These back here and these I've hardly even touched. It's not even glossy here yet. Um, I was a little bit concerned about making sure that it kind of tied in with what was happening on the other side. And I don't know how important that is at this point. I'm just not sure about that. So I'm gonna kind of let that concern of mine go. And um, <laughs> they're all stuck together. Doesn't matter though, look what, how interesting that is where the paint pulled away from some of those spots. I guess I must have maybe put something heavy on top of this. So it's a good idea when they're kind of fresh to just page through them every once in a while and um, you know make sure they're unstuck. I think I kind of would have preferred that didn't happen, but uh, oh well. That's interesting. I feel like that's upside down. That's funny. That's not integrated very well. I might have to work on that a little bit more. Um, so definitely some pages are a little bit more successful than others, and that is fine too. That's part of the process of working in a sketchbook or a journal. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll set a timer so that I don't go too long on this. I'll set it for half an hour. And uh, I'm going to put my gloves on. Forgive me for how messy these gloves are, but I cannot bring myself to throw them away before I feel like they are just done for. At some point, the paint starts peeling off of them and getting into the paint surface that I'm working on. And that's when I start to kind of pull away from that. So let's see what kind of risks I can take and maybe make this a little bit more interesting. Uh, sorry for the shaking. My, um, my cord was in the way and I had needed to move that out of the way. So let's see, I'm all about this kind of turquoise right now, as you can see from my palette. And some white and some black, maybe. Been noticing a tendency in myself. I love my big tubs of paint, but when I'm painting like this, I don't like having to pull it out and scoop the paint out. So I might have to order some tubes of just the Liquitex Basics, which is an inexpensive white and black that I like to use for tinting. Um, yeah, let's start right there for right now. And I'm gonna use a really scratchy old brush so that I don't get too dear. So this is, you know, this is actually an old oil painting brush, which you don't usually want to switch those back and forth, but I don't oil paint anymore and I want something that's all ready so that I don't have so much control. So let's see. What can I do with some nice, let's see. It also seems to help to add some uh, medium. This is a uh, gloss medium. Add some medium into the paint. It makes it juicier and it just moves across the surface a little bit more nicely. And I think I, ooh, look at how strong that black is. Okay. I also think I want some of this 
This is Naples Yellow Hue in the Liquitex Basics. Well, I'm not a fan of this color, really. When it's mixed with white, it's sort of nice. Uh, it's a nice neutral, so I'm going to just do that, I think. And we'll see what happens with that. A little paint rag over here to wipe some of the paint off, but I'm not going to be too concerned about keeping my colors pristine either because I'm going after the unpredictable what happens when you mix things together and look at how interesting that dark is. That could be really cool in here. So let's see, I've got a lot of squares maybe and I do want to preserve that I think. So what if I kind of some circles going in here. And if you put a color in one spot, you want to put it in other spots as well. I really don't like what happened with this bit of collage here where I allowed that to become um, where the black got on it. Not a fan of that. So let's see, I'm attached to that little bit of coppery, reddish copper there, so I'm going to go ahead and go over it and see what happens. And maybe, what if I scratched into these a little bit here too. This is kind of one of my signature shapes is circles within circles within circles. Really very fond of that particular motif. So now that's already more interesting, I think. So let's see what else could I do here. I'm going to see more light there, but not, let's see, I need more white paint, excuse me, for reaching across. You can't exactly see my palette here. I don't, you know, there's, I'm noticing something about myself that I'm curious about. I seem to get in a hurry when I'm doing this, and I don't know if I'm trying to outrace my mind or if it's something else entirely. I honestly don't know. But I'm curious about that, so that's just another something to be curious about. Let's see, now I do have, this is side two, and I don't want to mess up side one too badly, so I'm just going to put some fresh paper that is, the paint is dry on it. It's not really fresh, but the paint is dry underneath and see if I can't maybe stop that from getting too messed up. Let's see. Now what's going to be in the way? I want to preserve that area if possible, but it doesn't have to be. This is a nice transparent Color. So what if we did come in here with more circles and just kind of Oh, that's kind of cool the... This and then that and then the other thing I'm thinking about doing here is really scratching. Let's see I take a palette knife and really kind of rough this edge up a bit even out into here a little. That's interesting. What about... Okay. I think, I think I'm moving too quickly. I think I need to slow myself down a little bit and listen. It's part of what I'm always trying to do is listen. So I don't even, I got so excited I don't even have a ton of water set out for my brushes yet.
not a bad thing, certainly, to be excited about what you're doing. Okay, I'm looking for a small, long-handled brush. I'm going to dip that in some paint, and let's see about some... What if we just kind of... Well, I feel like maybe even white would be good with this. Yeah, let's just get some white out. So this is one of the things that I find helps me when I get too attached to something and it's starting to get in my way. It's time to start thinking about breaking it up, doing something else to it. So that certainly is more interesting than it was. What if I... brush and some clear white because that is still bothering me there and I think rather than trying to oh look that's not gonna that's too transparent all right so I've got the gloss medium on top of that so I can just wipe that right back off again and let's I'm gonna have to open up this big old jar anyway I think I probably told you with these big jars, I keep plastic in between the um, lid and the jar so that uh, the paint doesn't get on the rim and just stick to everything. Okay, so what if I... I'm putting my hand right in the paint palette. You know, I don't think it matters how big your table is. There's never going to be enough room. Just kind of do that as well, which hopefully enough covers up a little bit more of that spot where I kind of got that black smeared around funny on my bit of collage. Okay, so that page right there is better. I don't know that it's done yet, but I'm happy with it for now. Now I felt like this is just kind of dirty. So let's bring in some nice crisp color. And see what happens with that. Now this is one of the problems with the student grade paint. This is a Liquitex Basics paint. Uh, it doesn't have the pigment load that some other things do, so you don't always get the coverage. And sometimes that's really nice. I like transparency, transparent paint. And sometimes it's a problem. So I do have other things that I use to get more transparency. But right now, I also kind of like what it looks like to have a really thick application of paint. The ridges that it's creating. Let's overlap those two shapes. Oops, that didn't quite work out. Let's see bit more fresh paint. I wiped off my brush. Let's see if I can get that to just cover without mixing in. Yeah, I'm gonna have to come back. Maybe we'll see what I think about it. Maybe I'll just like it just the way it is. Oops, I still got that black in. Thought I wiped it out. So maybe, where's my palette? What if 
I got a very light value of this yellow. Let's see. Ugh, yuck. It's not yellow, it's just an ugly beige. Okay, so. Darker value of it. That's better. I've probably mentioned before that this Naples yellow is a very funny, well, it's a color that varies from manufacturer to manufacturer. So, um, in um, Liquitex Basics, which is what this is, it's way more beige. Um, and I'm not a huge fan. But then, in other versions, other manufacturers' versions of it, it becomes this nice creamy sort of a yellow. Oh, what do we think about that? I don't know about that. So I have the um, gloss gel over the top of this. I can just wipe that away. Yeah, I think I'm glad I did that. Okay, so sometimes looking at all of this gets to be a little bit more challenging for me. I like them to work page by page as well as, let's see if I can do this without goofing things up, as well as um, stretched out. So if I bend it a little bit, it helps me to look. I like that better. I might, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave that alone for right now. This page still, I could almost use some of this. And I know that I did that. Um, that's from a bit of collage paper. I took some um, tissue paper and painted on it. But I think what I'm going to do is be brave. This is a bit of black paint that's mixed with airbrush medium, which helps it to... Um, become very, very liquid without uh, having problems of adhering, although I'm noticing over the gel medium that it does repel a little bit anyway, but it's kind of a cool effect. So let's see what would happen if I tried to do something with that. Let's cover this tub of white back up again. And what I want to do with that is to keep it going across so that this, I don't want it to meet up with this, but I want it to come over onto this side a little bit so that um, it's somewhat similar, or so that it, it echoes. Repetition is one of the elements of design that helps with make a good comp composition. And composition is even more important with abstract paintings because there is no subject matter for people's eyes to get caught on, um, for them to recognize. <laughs> I guess I should have waited till the white paint dried. But that's still kind of cool. Let's see, can I, if I try and go back into there, it's gonna look less fresh, so. I need to bear that in mind. So maybe what I'll do is wait till that dries and see what I think about it and maybe come back in with something else. Even, oh, here, I know what I can do. I know what I can do. I will grab a woody pencil. black, which needs to be sharpened, of course. Don't worry about getting them too sharp, but if you're not familiar with them, how fun is that? Great big fat pencil sharpener. So that's kind of, ah, uh, you know what, right now, I'm going to stop before I go too, too, too far. So those two pages I'm going to leave be, 
and let's take a look at what's happening next. So I've got my uh, timer going, which is a kind of a good technique to use at home too, to um, just to keep you moving and to make you stop before you overwork. So let's see. I do here. I said I wanted some nice fresh clean color and I believe that to still be the case. So I need more white. Scoop some out on my palette here. And I want to mix it in with some of this, get it very close to white, but still creamy. See, when it gets white enough, it then becomes kind of creamy and pretty again. So let's try next page just like that I think even though I was pretty happy with that I think that that is not going to hurt and let's I'm interested in this but it got so muddy let's see what would happen if I just came up this way I like how the blue is coming through that a little bit as well to do that upside down. Okay, I already like that better. What happens if I make that darker? So I'm taking some of this um, dark green that I had. Let's see what happens if I darken. Yeah, so that's kind of an interesting color right there too. So resist that was underneath there and here I've gone and covered that up but what I could do would be to go back to Let's see. I'm liking that that looks cleaner Was going to get rid of that triangle, and now I'm not so sure. Back to my little black pencil again. What if we went? Well, it certainly is more interesting than it was. Use a little bit of just crisp white. So let's. I'm just wiping the excess paint off of my brush. And let's come in here with some clean, fresh white. Maybe. I 
made that line up with this, and I'm not a fan of that. So let's, I think I might be a little attached to that pretty green seven there. So I'll mark that off a little. Yeah, I think that helped a lot. And I think I'd like just maybe just another little bit of that right up here. there but I have to say I like that page a whole lot better than I did and I like what happened here so I'm going to go back into here with my little black pencil if I can find it <laughs> there it is okay so palette out of the way so I'll put my hand arm in it And move this back this way. Just in case you can't already tell, this little area right here is the neatest part of my entire table. I think I want to just repeat something like that. of from darker to lighter maybe, thicker lines to thinner lines. I think that helps some too. Let's see if I can't vary my lines a little bit more. I like how that ties into this. Let's see what can we do then to just go kind of there a little bit. A little bit more white, I think, maybe. Probably should just leave it alone, though. Do what I'm telling you to do. Just leave things alone for a little while and see how I feel about it next time. Like that. And let's see if I can do this without getting these pages to fold in on themselves. I like this one. I liked it before, but I think that just added a little something. I sort of wish it was a little bit straighter, but oh well. So that brings us to this next page. Oops. And I want to just look at... Yeah, I probably should take some time to clean off my table. I've got circles, I've got circles, I've got circles. I would like to see more white in there. So I've got some on my palette over here. I'll take my ratty brush and just and they can be differing circles. Maybe some of them are filled in and some of them aren't. Let's see. I'm going to link one page to the other while I'm at it. underneath there and if I've done those over here let's do something else like that that one was done with a stencil so it's kind of perfect so I like that I've got another one near it that isn't and then let's let the paint 
be a little bit thin in places. Maybe I'll even bring my little tissue paper here and pick some of that paint up again. Play with transparency, always creating differences. And let's I think I've got enough of that light value. I'm starting to look at value now. If I squint my eyes. I have some dark over here, but I don't have any over here. So let's start with a medium dark value. didn't change things too much for you. That was just getting in my way. lines now. Playing around a little bit with weight here. Right, so the biggest one is fading away to almost nothing and the littlest arch is um, thick and fat and the boldest of all of them. Let's do another one right here. I have a hard time getting that even remotely round. But again, that's part of the whole plan. too how I'm continuing to use my limited palette. That's bothering me right there just a little bit. Look at that. Um, I can see the edge of this tissue paper and it sort of caught my eye. Oops, and there's my alarm going off. So I'll stop right here and we'll pick this up next time. Thanks for watching.